So AI is a fantastic design tool to create new products more easily than it's ever been possible before. But there's a lot of tools now starting to pop up. So which ones should you use and where can you actually use them? So we're gonna go from the very basic that anybody can do with the apps you already have on your phone, all the way up to kind of the more giga sort of stuff where you kind of need to be professional and AI is more of an enabler. So let's start right out. The very first application that you can do is just Dolly out of ChatGPT. This is a very simple one. Right now, there is a tool called Lithophane Maker. And what you can do is you take an image, you upload it, and it will create a nightlight cover for you. But you need original photos. If you are able to create good original photos with Dolly to where you can generate the photos, export them, and then upload them to Lithophane Maker, you're able to create images that are really, really unique and really abstract and interesting that have never Ever been possible before. Now you don't want to use the normal generic AI schlock that it puts out, work with it a little bit, guide it along a little bit. But the value of this is that you can create hundreds of variations of a nightlight, list all those hundreds of variations, and you can plug your store into our teleport plugin so that whenever somebody orders a nightlight, we print the lithophane and then include the light and ship it directly to the customer. So you're able to very passively create large quantities of options for customers and then not have to worry about the fulfillment. It's a lot easier easier than many of the other ways out there. But this is a very simple sort of gateway drug to using AI to make a real 3D printed item. All right, so that one wasn't really AI 3D modeling, but it is using AI to create real products. Now let's go into the actual modeling tools. One of the very first tools that we ever used on this channel was Rodin, and Rodin is just a text prompt 3D model generator. The problem with these AI 3D model generators though is that they're not very good at precision. They are able to create abstract sort of organic shapes like a castle or a dragon or a blob or a rock or something along those lines, but they're not very good at like precision. You can't make a square with a hole inside of it. So there can be a challenge there. But Rodin is a decent one. It's able to output fairly reasonable models. We actually have a long form video where we talk about it over here. But all you have to do is describe the item that you want. It will show you a preview image. And then you're able to generate the model from that. It's pretty easy to use. It does have some limitations because a lot of these applications are very data intensive. So they need to pay their bills. So you get a few tries at it before you have to start paying for it, but it is able to generate reasonable 3D models. Next, you have Supercraft, and Supercraft is a Y Combinator backed company. They also use an image to 3D model generation, but they have a different sort of workflow to it, to where you kind of follow a chain of thought, where you do the original prompt, and then you get an image, and then you can start tweaking that image and generating new images so you can ideate and evolve the idea a lot more rather than just saying, I want a monster, go, and you get the first result that you get. You're able to evolve the image and kind of follow a workflow. This is a really useful way to do it if you don't know exactly what you want, but you want to kind of start with something broad and then narrow in of that looks pretty good, that looks pretty good, let's move that around a little bit and prompt it along to get to a narrower focus. And Supercraft has actually been a partner. We have integrated our API with them in the past to where people could just immediately order the print of the model after they had generated the 3D model itself, which is really handy. But the challenge with this is that again, it doesn't really know what it's making and doesn't have a lot of spatial awareness. Very often, Supercraft is good for either sort of industrial design evolution models and then you have some prototypes, but then creating game model designs to where you can wrap it with the actual image and then you have a 3D model floating around inside of your video game. So it's really good for 3D assets inside of a 3D world, but maybe not greatest for 3D printing because of the artifacting that can arise. But now we do get into one that was explicitly designed for 3D printing, and this is Backflip. Backflip was just recently released by the guys who started up MarkForged, so they know a little bit about 3D printing. But Backflip has a really nice interface where you go ahead and do a text prompt, and again, you get a few images, you select the image that you want, and then you can split off from that and continue to kind of evolve it and change the design. It's similar to Supercraft, but a lot more stringent and linear, more like what an engineer would create. But what's really interesting about Backflip is that unlike all the other 3D model generators, it's really good at refining the model after it's created. Now it still has the limitations of many of these AI models. It has kind of generic sort of shapes. So like when we ask for a monster with an eyeball, the eye comes out like a donut stuck in front of a sphere, which is a little bit rougher than what you would hope for. But generally, Backflip is actually quite good at generating a model that is better than you would expect. And it has the added benefit of most of its models actually have a flat lower surface. So it can be printed on a print bed. 
Now, this is a really interesting situation around all these 3D model generators. They're actually working through effectively a reverse photogrammetry sort of a system, where once you create the image and then say generate model, it creates a bunch more images of that model. It then takes those images and reverses them into a 3D model as if you took a photo all the way around if you were trying to do a 3D scan of whatever object it might be. But again, this is what creates this artifacting. Photogrammetry is not a very precise way of getting uh, the model out of something. Something. So there's a lot of refinement to be done, but at the same time, these things have already started to be quite good. And again, they're able to create really interesting situations where you can create a lot of different models really reliably that are organic or would be very difficult to sculpt or can serve as a baseline for ongoing sculpting. So it's very much a tool. It's not a replacement at all in any sort of context. But let's go ahead and get into our final way of doing 3D model generation. This is for all the people who are pro CAD people who actually want engineering design because engineering design from AI right now is basically not doable. What is it? Here's the thing. There is a free software out there called AutoSCAD or OpenSCAD. Both of these allow you to use a terminal to upload text commands in order to create a 3D model. Those text commands can be generated by an LLM. So what you can do is you can go into Claude or ChatGBT, and then you can describe the object that you want to create. Then you can say, generate OpenSCAD code. And it will generate code that can then be pasted over into an AutoSCAD terminal, and it will generate a model for you that is engineering accurate because it's using defined code. Here's the trick with this. You need to be very understanding of the physical shape that you're trying to create because describing this in detail in English language is really quite difficult. You can't always just say, put a chamfer on the corner or something because it'll just put the chamfer right there rather than sending it all the way around the outer side or place a cylinder on the inside that's the center of the hinge. You have to describe in excruciating detail the dimensions and locations of all the objects in here as if you were doing it in CAD. But this is where the big advantage is. You do not have to learn the tools in CAD to do this. You don't have to go through a boot camp of learning how to use Autodesk or Tinkercad or SolidWorks or any of the rest of them to do this. You just need to be very precise in your language, which is way easier. You might have to chat for a while before you get code that you actually want, but you can generate reasonably complex CAD models pretty easily with this just through spoken language. Again, I wanna emphasize the value of this. 3D printing is not about creating uh, variations, but it's about creating selection. You can have infinite selection, but zero inventory. And once you have those models, these designs that are sellable and are useful products, then you're able to list them for people to sell. And you don't have to have a print farm to produce them. Again, here at Slant3D, we created our teleport plugin, where all you have to do is upload a model, and then we will print it and ship it to your customer when your customer orders it. You never have to see a printer ever. But there's all of these technologies coming together to where you can create a really sustainable and viable business and take advantage of the new technology. You were never able to create 100 variations of a physical product before. This is the first time in history that this has been this feasible and this easy without having to just have an army of people working at something. This is a huge enabler and will allow people to create tech companies and hardware companies that were never possible before. So hopefully that gave you some context around AI and how to get 3D models out of it. It's a really cool domain and it's evolving really fast. So comment down below if you know other AI 3D model generators that people ought to check out and then people can try them out and see what they can do. And of course, go over and check out Teleport if you haven't already. It's a great app and it's a great way to start up a 3D printing business without having to have a 3D printer. Have a great day, everybody.